Okay, um, another of our live hot seats, and this time we're joined by Alfie. Now, we're going to get into Alfie's story, but it's unfortunately it's an all too common one uh, around back injuries. Uh, this time we're, we're more into stress fracture range, where last time we talked to Ryan, he was disc issues. Um, now we're into the sort of the very common fast bowling injury. So, Alfie, welcome. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Nice to be on, mate. Nice to finally have a have a chat about what we've done over the last, what is it, two and a half years now, pretty much. It's been, yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels longer sometimes, but um, <laughs> it does, it does. <laughs> we can get stuck in. Yeah. So, mate, first up, just uh, let's go into those issues. What were these big issues which were happening before you before you came to me? What was going on? Talk about your cricket and, and yeah. everything which led up in the two, three years before you came on. Okay, mate. Well, look. Firstly, it's, it's taken a while, really, to to compile uh, my my notes for this. It goes all the way back to February of 2019, and that was when uh, my first, well, my stress fracture happened at my county. Sort of tried to look at a few different factors as to why it, it might have happened. Um, so, firstly, I've got I was sort of used as cannon fodder for batters. Um, yeah. I think sort of 2016, 17, and obviously 18 as well. Um, between the months of sort of October and December. Bowling workload wasn't massive at all. Technical sessions, s &C, wasn't a great deal of bowling. But as soon as you hit January, bang, <laughs> the bowling hits and your workload goes up massively. There's not, you know, there's not really a middle ground between the two. So I feel like that might have been some sort of factor um, for the stress in the end. Um, so you, you basically had s &C and sort of technical work. Yep. And then... January hits and then just bowling. Pretty much, mate. There's um S and C is is in there as well, but um I, I, there's like like an hour hour before and then an hour of technical as well. So it was yeah the bowling workload went up massively, mate, without any any sort of warning on the body, and that happened for for a good two three years while I was in the the setup. So yeah, that was not great looking back on it now. So you had the stress fracture in nineteen. Yeah. Was that the, the start of back issues or were you, were you having issues before that? No, I, you know, I've been fairly lucky, mate. I've had no issues really with injuries before. No big, no big issues. I had a, a little groin niggle. Um, I think it's difficult for bowlers not to pick up little injuries. But in terms of big things, stressy was was the first one in uh, in 2019, yeah. Which is, so, so what happened just leading up to it in, in sort of with the diagnosis and everything like that? Yeah, so it was... Mate, I remember the date like it was yesterday, 21st of February, 2019. Uh, bowling, it was, um, I think, a couple of hours of bowling, mate, um, against batters, obviously quite a lot, like I said, with the workload going up. Um, and I just felt someone in my back. So I was like, right, I should probably give it a rest um, after a couple more balls, bowled for it for a little bit. And then spoke to one of my coaches. Um, I think at the time he sort of said, just just have a little rest. And, and if you can see a local physio, then brilliant, because there wasn't much of a connection between the the academy and, and the physio team. We had an, uh, a young guy in as, as S&C, but other than that, there wasn't a great mix between the, the physio side of things and, and the players for the academy players anyway. So I went, um, like quite a lot of people do, sort of went around in circles. So doctors, physios, a couple of physios, a couple of doctors. Um, and my local physio, one that I'd been to for, like I said, I had a couple, a couple of really small injuries, um, they couldn't really diagnose it, didn't really know what it was, but they said, um, go and, and, and get an MRI done. So that's exactly what I did. And that did confirm that the stress fracture, uh, so lower lumbar on the left side, which is obviously quite quite common for, for pace bowlers. Um, so that was how it got diagnosed initially. Um, and then from then on, uh, I had sort of minimal contact with the, the physio at my county between sort of Feb 2019 when it happened and August 2019. And I went and saw him at the, the second 11 ground. And he basically said, for the next few months, do some strength work, do some stretches and, and rest, <laughs> which obviously we know now is a, a big sort of red flag and a big no-no. I, I don't think we'd, um unless we don't like the bloke, we wouldn't we wouldn't give him that sort of stuff to do. So yeah, looking back on it now, mate, it, it, it's not great, but that's that's what happened. Um, so in terms of the initial diagnosis, that's, that's how it went down. And so how, from... 2019 to when we first chatted in end of well October 2020. Yeah, what did that look like? 
Okay. So we'll go from go from August 2019 because that was when I had to do. I was just giving some basic basic stretches and, and rest it. So between those sorts of times, I didn't do anything at all. I was that involved with the county setup for S and C or bowling at all. So between normally, obviously, I'd be in um, start of October until December for the first sort of winter block. Didn't happen at all. I was told just just don't bother with that basically. So that's what I did. Um, uh, from then on, I rejoined with uh, the county in January 2020 after the, the time they, they'd said to, to rest. Um, got straight back into the, the basic sort of bog standard, if you like, uh, strength s &C, straight back into the bowling. Um, and obviously I hadn't had any sort of technical work at all. So it was right, bang, straight back into the the heavier workload bowling, um, which obviously is, is just not good, not sensible at all. But so did, did they investigate when you came back? Did they look at you at all and and um see how you're moving or or do any sort of testing or was it just literally right? You you probably healed now straight back to bowling. Yeah, mate. That 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 was something I'm gonna. I sure we we'll talk about quite a lot. Was in terms of mobility and that we, I hadn't heard of that at all really, and that wasn't pushed on me at my county. They didn't do any sort of movement screening. Didn't look at how I was moving. Um, the only real thing was uh quite a few different inputs from from bowling coaches telling me i need to bowl like this or look like this which is yeah not not great at all but in terms of mobility and movement nothing at all so it was just get back into it bowl but you should be fine after your rest period and, and get back into your strength s and c so the bowling coaches would they just give you literally an outcome based thing saying you've got to be taller at the crease or or just one of those you know normal sort of crappy coaching jargon yeah well, i had I had a couple of oh, a couple three three four four maybe bowling coaches over the between 2018 and 19 when it when it happened and then into 2020 as well and they were all saying slightly different things um they liked the hurdle drills when you when you're running up hurdling um which i didn't particularly like there was always poles um, you run between your poles try and bowl try and stay a little bit taller at the crease exactly like you said there um they did sort of initially see the lateral flexion, which I, you know, we probably both agree that that didn't help with the, with the stress fracture. Um, but yeah, th there was a lot of different inputs, um, a lot of different voices that was, was confusing as a young player, you know, 14, 15, 16 coming through. Ideally you'd like to think you have some sort of idea as, as you know, a set structure, but no, it was, it was different. And and sometimes you turn up different weeks and you get different feedback um you know one coach isn't there the other's there and he tells you something different so it was always um always mixed and, and confusing so it sounds just almost like off the cuff advice yeah mate you've hit no one had met there mate there was an ex-player there um quite quite a, quite a famous ex-player wouldn't name him um played played a few times for england and, and the county um and he was basically trying to model me well he's trying to get me to be the new him basically that, that's probably the best way I can put it. Um, and then I had um, a couple of other coaches um, trying to do slightly different things. So it was very much off the cuff. It was very much right. What do I want my bowler to look like? Not what are you doing right now? So it, it, there was not really a great um, sort of relay in terms of information between those coaches. or That's how it seemed anyway. And you talk about they just told you to go and get a strong. What did that look like? Um, well, with the so with the physio, he w interesting because he wasn't really an SNC coach, but there was there was like I said a, a lack of communication between the SNC and the physio and the SNC and me. So the basic program, I think I shared the the basic sort of program with you a, a while back, um, but it was very much looking at squats, looking at deadlifts, looking at hip thrusts, um, just trying to improve your numbers. Basically, you need to improve the numbers, and that will help you and, and and make sure you stay injury free, which obviously we know now is well you know some some bits of it can help but there's there's a whole lot more to it jesus <laughs> okay yeah. cool so what made you contact me mate it was um it was last resort to be honest with you um i say so 2019 going back to then i played played that season as a batter couldn't bowl 2020 was obviously covid um cut short um so i think it was what was it july august into september Playing as a batter again, bad at three, couple of okay knocks, but mate, I, I'm a bowler. If I can't bowl, I thought, well, why, 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 um, why play? Basically, I uh, didn't enjoy my cricket anymore. 
And I was, I was, I think I just started playing Sunday league football again. And I thought, right, get back into my football. Because when I was younger, I did that. And I thought, right, um, if I want to play cricket, then something needs to change. I need to try and um, do something different. And I, I'm not a big fan of S&C, mate. I, I, I never was anyway. Back in back when I was a younger player, I hated it. I used to do what I could to avoid it. Uh, my dad would make sure I was always there, though. So um, coming to you was was uh, a challenge for me mentally, if, if if not physically. But it was the back end of September 2020, I think it was initially when I DM'd you. I looked at the DMs earlier. Um, sort of just poured my my heart out in terms of cricket. Told you my my story, everything that happened um, that I've already mentioned above between that time and. Feb 2019. Um, so yeah, last last resort. What why I came to cricket strength, mate. I've been following you for a, for a few months um, during lockdown, trying to pick up bits and bobs. But um, as a, as a 16 year old, it was quite confusing. Did, did we really know exactly what to take? So um, yeah, I thought I'd I'd try and get it from the horse's mouth direct. So what what sort of really resonated with you that thought right? Okay, I think I think they can help. I looked at your pro, um, Instagram. Quite yeah. a few good videos on there, quite a few videos with pros and things like that. So straight away, I can see you've got, well, you had the experience. Obviously, I knew at the time you worked at, at Worcester. Um, so, yeah, mate, that, that was probably the biggest thing, looking at people, looking at results. I remember you used to upload those um, screenshots of players before and after, how their actions looked um, and, and and how their bodies, bodies were. So that was probably the biggest thing. For me, online coaching was never something that I looked at and thought, um, it, it's, you know, I didn't really think it was for me or it would help. But looking at that and seeing the results for myself pro- probably sort of persuaded me to go, well, as a last resort, it's, it's probably worth getting in contact. Sweet. Okay. So what were your initial thoughts after our, our chat? My initial thoughts were mixed, to be honest with you. All positive, but I had my doubts. And I think you sort of realised that as well. I was bombarding you with messages um every session I was doing I'd say probably six seven different um contact periods a day with you just just messaging you on whatsapp sending you form videos asking you know is this right this right so straight you know I was hesitant early on the more we got into it um and and the more I, I saw the results obviously into the 2021 season I'm sure we'll talk about that anyway um that was when I sort of finally went right this is you know this bloke he means business and he and he he gets results. So yeah, early on hesitant, um, but initial thoughts all good. I think the Zoom call we had initially, I got my dad involved because financially it was going to be going to be difficult for me, but you could see that we were quite keen and quite serious early on. Um, and obviously you gave me that movement screen straight away and I thought, well, I haven't done this before. This is brand new. So straight away, it was something different. I was looking at things in a, in a different angle. Maybe there is a way back. So if anything, gave me hope even yeah. though it was, it was sort of mixed to start with. In in that first sort of couple of phases, that must have been very strange because it was such a departure from what you'd been given before. So uh, a lot of you must have been thinking, well, this is this is odd, this. Yeah. Mate, mass- massively, mate. I won't deny it. Um, you know, at first, I'm looking at it thinking, well... Where's the squats? <laughs> well, I was squat- exactly. I was squatting, I was deadlifting, I was bench pressing, um, rowing, whatever it may be. And now I'm doing thoracic rotations or I'm I'm doing hip mobility. I'm thinking, well, how's this going to help me get better? But actually, you do it, you stick with it. And you, you like like many things, you trust the process that does, does come through and it did come through in the end. Yeah. You hadn't been balloon breathing before with the county, did you? Mate. <laughs> hey, mental. Honestly, some of the stuff I was looking at, thinking he, he, he can't be, he can't be serious. He's got to be trying to mug me off. But honestly, it was, it was brilliant and it was different. So, no, it was, um, it was enjoyable and it was also a good learning curve because now some of the things for me working with some of the uni boys in S and C doing, doing some different bits, you know, it does open, open people's eyes, mate. So it certainly opened my eyes with, with um, S and C and and how it can ultimately help me get back on the pitch. Because and that's the big thing of what I want to get out there is to tell people there is another way there isn't just you've got to get stronger because that we know that that, that is what 99 percent of people are doing in getting injured and it's not yeah. great so yeah. so how was the whole process overall for you from that first call to to get into the season in 2021 how did you find it yeah process was um I'd like to say the process was really smooth because from your end, it was from my end, it was very much back and forth doubting myself whether it actually worked. But the contact that I got with you was, was amazing, mate. The, the 
always always available on whatsapp instagram whatever it may be any sort of questions queries i had um were answered so you smoothed it out as much as you possibly could um i didn't really have you know i didn't really feel my back at all while i was doing any of the exercises it's sort of i mean like i said the first sort of three months of the program was really trying to explore the, the mobility and how i was moving so it certainly um opened my eyes to that a little bit more process then overall i'll probably say was was, was pretty good between that time and, and, and April 2021 and, and obviously I've been working with you since then um, and, and we speak regularly so the process was was good mate I, I've enjoyed it love it love it and what happened so obviously you had that back injury from 19 last resort getting to me so what happened that 2021 season 2021 mate was um, the best way I can put it was injury free it was it was something that I didn't expect to happen. I was more than um, happy to play half a season. I was expecting setbacks here and there, but no, um, played the full season. Wasn't amazing. I mean, I'd had, well, at, at that point, I hadn't bowled properly since 2018. Uh, August 2018 was the last time I, I bowled a ball really in a match situation other than, um, yeah, that was, that must've been it. Wowzers. Yeah. A long time when you think about it. So um, yeah, that season was injury free. Um, took took a few wickets. I, I was just more happy to be back playing, mate. That was the main thing. Yeah. I was making sure my warm ups were different to everybody else. Um, which people were thinking, "What are you doing when I'm when I'm doing the med ball stuff, the heavy ball work? Turn up early to get my mobility done. Um, do uh, what's it the the movement flow sequences, things like that. So overall, my attitude towards strength and conditioning completely changed um as as we know now because I'm, I'm working with you um but yeah the, the the bowling side of things was was a lot better I think in terms of outcome it could have been could have been better but you know there's there's still time to work on that um so yeah I was I was just very pleased to be out there playing mate you, when you're injured you um you forget you, you know you appreciate how good it is to, to be out there playing yeah and that was the big thing the big thing was to get you back playing confident in your body and then we knew the the roadmap of what we did was for you to really be totally peaking when you coming out into your third year at uni, because that's yes, the yes. time when you're going to be, you know, hopefully in front of counties and, and getting picked up. So perfect. So what's life like now with it, with your back particularly? Back, back is fine, mate. But back is fine because I'm doing my best to look after it. I'm doing the work. What One thing I do want to say is... Uh, you know, people come to you and, and come to work, cricket straight for all the time and expect miracles, but you've got to do the work yourself. So mobility is not entertaining. It's not fun. I'm not going to say it is, but it does work. So um, looking after that every week, daily, I'm, I'm doing movement flow sequences. Um, massively, massively helps, mate. I've no issues with my back and I've had no issues since, since I've been working with you. So brilliant. Fantastic. Last question then, buddy. Yeah. If we were to go back before that first DM to me, yeah, and you'd never met me, yeah, okay. How much money would someone have to give you now to be back in that position, but without the path we've given you, mate? Yeah, I think you asked this what twenty minutes ago. It's difficult. I don't think there's any amount of money, mate. I think um, sending that message was the best thing I'd done, and obviously a last resort. So it was it was out of desperation. Um, there's no no amount of money. I don't think. It was your Hail Mary, yeah? <laughs> oh, mate, it, it genuinely was. Genuinely was, mate. Brilliant. Great stuff. Well, mate, you know, from my point of view, um, I do, as you know, when someone comes onto the one to one plan, they can't just join, we do a call, because I need to look into the person's eyes yeah. and find out what they're all about. Yeah. And with you, I, I could see a desperation to play, mm. and that, but that almost had given up. I'm thinking, right, you know, we'll give this a go, but I'm not sure it's going to work because, you know, the county have told me to do this and it hasn't worked. But I knew what we could do with you because you had the determination. In yeah. The last few years, I thought, right, he's doing this. So all credit to you, mate. So like I said, we've got this roadmap of where we want to get you. By the third year at uni, you should be properly peaking, bowling quick, bowling regularly, getting wickets and being in front of coaches, counties, and getting hopefully a contract mate i hope so and i hope i'm still well, i will be still pushing the uh different out of the box snc methods onto them as well so don't worry about that 
Great stuff. Great stuff. So, guys listening, have you got any questions? Simon's uh, thing, this all sounds very familiar. And Simon, you're dead on, buddy. And, and that's the, the issue for me is I'd love it if this was an isolated instant. This is probably happening to two or three uh, players at every county at the moment. Probably more if we look at all the sort of different pathways and stuff. And, and um, they get told the same thing. Go and get stronger. Um, and they get stronger. They come back and it happens again and again and again. And there's just no great provisions in there for them. So it's a bit of a shame. So James, uh, how did you change your mindset, Alfie, from a kid who did not enjoy SNC uh, or want to do it to now loving it and promoting it? Uh, I had to. I had no choice, mate. If I wanted to play cricket and bowl, I had to change my mindset. And you, sometimes in life, you've got to do things you don't want to do. And SNC, like I said at Surrey, wasn't something that I wanted to do. So now. I think working with you, Ross, uh, did, did help it. Like I said, when you see the results early on, which I did pretty much straight away, then it sort of, um, it, you know, it, it does help, does help big time. So yeah, my mindset was a big thing, and and sort of allowing myself to trust the process, which is something that not everybody really wants to do. Good stuff. Any other questions, guys? Please get them in if you've got them. You can type them in or just unmute. Uh, Alfie, we're looking forward to seeing you at Standard Stead uh, for the 2023 season and getting the benefits of your progress. Mate, buzzing. Can't, can't wait to be joining you. And hopefully I can uh, help some of the boys out as well and help Jalen out with his uh, with his little injury. So, yeah. No, can't, can't wait to be in. Sweet. Should be flying. Cool. Any other questions, guys? If not, we will... Oh, yeah, Simon? Yeah. Yeah, great stuff, guys. Really interesting. Certainly some of your comments um, make sense, Juicy. After a quick Google search on Alfie, I know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. So how's, how's uni cricket? I don't know much about that. Can you say anything? Yeah, about yeah, you, yeah uni cricket's good, mate. It's good. It's, um, it's, it's slightly different to club cricket. I think what something that's important was um, – trying to push different elements of S&C on them. So I do the warm-ups before the games, uh, well, before training even at the moment. Um, so I get 10-minute blocks. Um, so I'm trying to teach them different different um, mobility things. So I've looked at thoracic, hammies, glutes, um, hips, things like that. So it's mostly just education. But um, nets are good, mate. Fielding's good. It's all good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's um, it's nice. It's nice to be, to be away from home in a different environment, but still pushing what we believe in for, for, for cricket strength. So, yeah, no, it's good. And I, I'm a big fan of it for young bowlers. I think it gives you the time to almost breathe and become what you're going to become without the the real sort of pressure and intensity and needing to, you know, if you if you get a contract at 18 and have a bad year, you can be off straight away, you know, and it's, it's a tough road back then because you almost get tainted with that, almost like a football manager who fails and gets sacked, you know, so you want to, you want to actually have that time to progress because you know bowlers it takes a very very special bowler like broad to come through at 19 broad and jimmy you know they're two very special bowlers so a lot of others take the time to progress and if yeah. you've got the time to do it without that worrying christ i might lose my contract it's great so you can get to sort of 21 22 being total control of your body total control of your game and then be ready to fly so I think mate, it... mate, mate, spot on. I just, I just want to say, we've spoken about it before. There's no sort of set age you need to come through. You know, some people bloom, bloom later. So uni cricket definitely does sort of open that door. Yeah, hundred percent. So James has asked, how much time per week would you say you need for a training program, or would that depend on the injury? Does it? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it, it depends. You know, if you've only got three lots of thirty minutes a week, then you have to fit what you need in there, and that's why. It's really crucial to test and assess. You know, if we don't assess, we don't know what you need. So just sort of saying, I've got half an hour, I'm going to go for a run, or got half an hour, I'm going to do squats and deadlifts. It's like, great, but is that what you need for your body at that moment in time? So, you know, it, it doesn't need a lot. You know, we I think we only started three sessions a week to start. Um, Pretty much. Like, yeah. we from there, and then there's always different times, like, when there's um, exams and things, we change it up. When we're heavy into the season, we change it up. So for me, the 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 one to one plan in particular, it's manipulated and fitted to the player because there's no point in me putting ten sessions, sitting back and thinking, "My God, I'm a great S and C. This program's amazing. 
if the player can't do it because they've not got the the right time, the right facilities, the right kit. So it has to fit to the player. Hmm. Yeah, hundred percent, mate, hundred percent. Cool. Any other questions, um, James? Yeah, sorry. Um, I wanted to. This is a bit longer than uh, I might need to type. Um, so I'm actually. I've just um. Ha- I've just. Uh, what do you call it? I've completely ruptured my ACL. Um, did that in October. Um, and so I'm walking on it fine now, and I'm waiting for an operation. But um, whenever I've had injuries in the past, I found it so hard to actually like motivate myself to do the necessary rehab work. Um, so, I mean, for me, obviously, I want to get back to full fitness, but it's always been the sort of motivation to get going. Um, like I don't know, Alfie. Obviously, you've had a lot of injuries, but like, what what gets you up and like how I don't know. I don't. It's, maybe it's a different sort of um question i'm asking but how do you sort of motivate yourself to actually do it yeah mate initially my motivation was getting back to play at my county um didn't well sort of half materialized didn't really in the end so um that was the initial motivation and then i don't like motivation at all mate it's discipline you've got to be disciplined enough to do it um and and in the end i I try lots of different methods i've done i'm a big fan of a guy called david goggins does audio books Love that guy. Promotes um, discipline, doing something every day. You might not want to do it, but uh, you, you have to do it. So it, it depends how keen you are at the end of the day, mate. If you if you want to get back on the park, you want to have a um, injury-free season, whatever it may be, you've got to have the mindset, that the discipline to do it. Motivation is good to start with. Um, I, can, I can send you some bits and bobs that I've listened to that have helped if, if, you, if you want. Um, mm. But yeah, overall discipline is, is, is probably the key. Yeah. And um and Ross, what sort of equipment would you say just for basic strength and conditioning, what sort of equipment would you say is sort of like the the I don't know, the top three things you might need? For your injury in particular or generally? Um, I think generally, if I'm mm-hmm. honest. So for me, you know, if you've got things like a skipping rope, a couple of kettlebells, a couple of power bags, um, sliders, bands, medi balls then you're pretty much good to go. You know, you okay. have a lot done with, with that kit. You don't need massive gyms um, that you can manipulate isometrics around door frames and th- different things like that, you know. So you don't need a hell of a lot, really. And, and just on the other point, it's it's that motivation gets you going. Discipline keeps you going. And you have mm. to have a big why. If, you, if you've got a, a why that's big enough, you do the work to get there. You know, so I think that's the thing, you know, that that why has to be there and every day you work towards it and then you break it down. You know, for you, you're waiting for an operation. So, right, what's the biggest bang for your buck you need to get done before the op? And so it would be strengthening around the knee. Okay. And then after the op, the first sort of few weeks, you won't be able to do much, but can you do some hip mobility? You know, can you do a bit of ankle mobility? You know, open chain offloaded. Um, and, and then you tick it off. So say, right, I've got a three-week block. You tick the days off and you try and join up the dots, you know, and then it gets you. Because when you look at, particularly at ACL rehab, you're looking at, you know, six months and that can seem like a lifetime, especially if you're sort of the same age as Alfie, if you're a youngster, six months is a lifetime. When, you, when you're my age, when you're getting on, you're 43, six months mm-hmm. goes by like that. And just remember, the time's going to pass anyway. From now to when it's healed, it's going to pass. So you might as well use that time wisely and get everything done. You don't want to get six months down the line and think, I could be back playing now, but I've not done the work. Because that's the worst. Because it's only you that you can blame as well. You're looking in the mirror and think, you didn't help me, did you? You didn't help me yesterday. So you do stuff today to help yourself for tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Very helpful. Pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, Dan, it is a different approach for older players. 100%. 100%. But it's a different approach for pretty much every player. You know, older players have got different things where they might have more time constraints because you've got family, you've got jobs, you've got pre-existing conditions. So, yeah, it, there's always a, a different approach. It depends where you, where you want to go. You know, if it's just to, to get pain-free and enjoy playing, there's one approach. If it's, right, you know, I still, I've got some, it, it, as Rocky called it in, in Rocky Balboa, I've still got some junk you know, down in the stomach that I need to work out, then right, put on pace, why not? You know, Richo came to Worcester at 34 with four years of injuries behind him and he put the work in and I missed two games in four years, 
270 wickets and made himself Wisden Cricket of the Year. So, yeah, there's always an approach to soup. Always. Cool. Right, I think that's it. Any more questions, guys? It's been great, this. Enjoyed it. No, we all good? Right, we will land the plane there. So, uh, Dan, James and Simon, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. And the questions. Alfie, you're a star, mate. And there's only good things in front because of that mindset, because the work we're going to do. You will uh, get where you need to go, I'm sure. So, guys, thanks very much, and we'll catch you soon.